Welcome to the 1970s season. Welcome to the new decade of the 70s. And Rexy says hello. He wants a part of this action. It's like he's like, yeah, a new decade. Let's go. So, lots happened. I uh, got dates and news scattered all over the place. So bear with me in here. January 17th, Sporting News names Willie Mays, player of the 1960s. January 20th, Lou Boudreau elected into the Hall of Fame by the Baseball Writers Association of America. February 1st, Special Veterans Committee selects for Ford Frick, Earl Combs, and Jesse Hines into the Hall of Fame. April 1st, Bud Selig purchases the Seattle Pilots for 10.8 million bucks. 10.8 million bucks. I wonder what that. I wonder what that is for inflation for today. Yeah, he ends up moving said Pilots to Milwaukee, just in time for the 1970 this coming season. They literally had no time to change uniforms. I think mentioned in the Seattle Pilots episode yesterday. Anyways, the Brewers play their first game at County Stadium in Milwaukee, and they lose 12-0 to California. May 10th, Hoyt Wilhelm, Hoyt Wilhelm is the first pitcher to appear in 1,000 games. May 12th, Ernie Banks hits home run number 500 in a Chicago 4-3 win over Atlanta. May 17th, Hank Aaron collects hit number 3,000. Then he is the founding member of the 3,000 hit and 500 home run club. Wow. He's also the ninth player to hit 3,000 hits. June 17th, Ernie Banks and Willie Mays each join the 500 home run club in, a, in the same game. Yeah, Cubs versus San Francisco Giants. June 30th, Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati opened. Opens. Reds lose 8 to 2. I believe that's the first game on our, our official turf. July 14th, at Cincinnati's all uh, at the All Star game in Cincinnati. First All Star game on our official turf. Believe it or not, if I'm mis no second, I lied. Yeah, okay. What happened here? National League 5, American League 4 at that All-Star game. July 16th, Three Rivers Stadium opens in Pittsburgh. Cincinnati beats Pittsburgh 4-3 to before 48,846 people. So that in uh, two open... That's two stadiums at... Two cookie-cutter stadiums, because they look like cookie-cutters. That can hold baseball and football, by the way. Yeah, I'm that old. July 18th, Willie Mays hits, hit, gets hit number 3,000. And we're going back in time, back to January when Kurt, January 16th, when Kurt Flood files a civil lawsuit challenging the reserve clause, which will end up having historic implications. The reserve clause back then is when contract for, you're contracted for the whole year, but the team gets to keep you forever until they trade you basically you had no right to you didn't have a say in whether you where you got traded and whether, whether it became a free so this civil lawsuit ends up having implications later on and i think marvin miller had a say in it too okay yeah, Flood had been traded to Philadelphia back in October 1969, and he refused to report to Philadelphia. And it was because that, hence the civil lawsuit. That's, I, don't, I don't get it. Anyways, February 19th, Commissioner Bowie Kuhn suspends Danny McLean, effective April 1st, for McLean's alleged involvement in a bookmaking operation. The suspension at the time was indefinite, but it was later reduced to three months. July 20th, Bill Singer, 
of the Dodgers. Throws a no-hitter. Beats Philadelphia 7-0. Catcher Jeff Torborg caught that no-hitter. Caught Sandy Koufax's perfect game in 1965. And he caught Nolan Ryan's first of seven no-hitters. I think he knew, might have known how to throw, call a couple no-hitters. Maybe? No? Maybe? Probably. Ah, season starts. Alex Johnson of California. We're doing the American League. Finished the top of the bat batting with a 329 average. First in the American League. Frank Howard of Washington with 44 home runs. Led the American League. And had 126 RBIs. Led the American League. Mike Cuellar of Baltimore, Dave McNally of Baltimore, and Jim Perry of Minnesota each had 24 wins. They all would tie for first in the major leagues. Gotcha. Diego Segui of Oakland, 2.56 ERA, led the majors. Sam McDowell. I didn't put down, I think he had. Anyways, he had 304 strikeouts. Led the majors. National League, Rico Cardi of Atlanta, 366 average, led the majors. Johnny Bench of Cincinnati had 45 home runs, led the majors, and 148 RBIs, led the majors. Pitching, Bob Gibson, Bob Gibson of St. Louis and Gaylord Perry of San Francisco each had 23 wins. They both Tied for first in the majors. They National League, not the majors. But Tom Seaver of the Mets, 2.82 ERA, led the National League. And 283 strikeouts, led the National League. Season stats. Start the American League. No, not season standings. I just did the stats. Season standings. American League East, Baltimore, 108 wins, 54 losses. Who, yeah, well, they finished first. Yankees, 93 and 69, 15 back. Boston, 87 and 75, 21 back. Detroit, 79 and, 80, 79 and 83, 29 back. Cleveland went 76 and 86, 32 back. Washington went 70 and 92, 38 back. Now do the American League West. Minnesota, 98 and 64, finished first, faces Baltimore in the American League Championship Series. Oakland, 89 and 73, 9 back. California, 86 and 76, 12 back. Kansas City and Milwaukee, Milwaukee's for Brewers for season, Milwaukee. Kansas City and Milwaukee each had 60, went 65 wins and 97 losses, 33 back. And dear old Chicago, 56 wins, 106 losses, 42 back. National League East, Pittsburgh finishes first, 89 and 73. Chicago goes 84 and 78, 5 back. New York Mets go 83 and 79, 6 back. St. Louis goes 80, 76 and 86, 13 back. Philadelphia goes 73 and 88, 15 and a half back. Montreal goes 73 and 89, 16 back. Cincinnati finished first in the National League West, 102 wins, 60 losses. Faces Pittsburgh in the National League Championship Series. Los Angeles goes 70, 87 and 74, 14 and a half back. San Francisco goes 86 and 76. 16 back. Houston goes 79 and 83, 23 back. Atlanta goes 76 and 86, 26 back. And San Diego goes 60, 63 and 99, 39 back. Now we do the League Championship Series. We start with the American League Championship Series, ALCS for short. Game 1 on October 3rd in Minnesota. Baltimore 10, Minnesota 6. Game 2, October 4th in Minnesota. 
Baltimore 11, Minnesota 3. And game 3 on October 5th in Baltimore. Baltimore 6, Minnesota 1. Baltimore's home games are at Memorial Stadium. And Minnesota's home games are at Metropolitan Stadium. Now do the National League Championship Series, the NLCS. Cincinnati's home games are at Riverfront Stadium. Pittsburgh's home games were at Three River Stadium, and this is the first. And this was the first time a series was been played in, played in its entirety on an artificial turf. So let's see how this shakes down. Game one on October third in Pittsburgh, Cincinnati three, Pittsburgh nothing in ten innings. Game two October fourth in Pittsburgh, Cincinnati three, Pittsburgh one, and game three October fifth. In Cincinnati, Reds 3, Pirates 2. The Reds versus the Pirates. It's the Reds versus the Orioles for the World Series. And Baltimore's home games were at Memorial Stadium. Cincinnati was at Riverfront Stadium. And this was the first World Series to play on artificial turf. Games 1 and 2 were on Cincinnati. And this was the last World Series in which all games were played in the afternoon. So let's find out who won. Game 1 on October 10th. In Cincinnati, Orioles 4, Reds 3. Game 2 on October 11th in Cincinnati, Orioles 6, Reds 5. Two-game lead for Baltimore. Game 3 on October 13th in Baltimore, Orioles 9, Cincinnati 3. Three-game lead. Can they wrap it up in Game 4? Game 4 on October 10th in Baltimore, Reds 6, Orioles 5. Now it's a three-game to one lead. In Game 5 on October 15th in Baltimore, Orioles 9, Reds 3. Baltimore wins the 1970 World Series. I believe that is their second championship after they won in 1966. So there you have it. Also, Earl Weaver's first World Series win. So there. So there you have it. Tomorrow, 1971. And who plays who in the World Series and how, what will the news be for tomorrow? Stay tuned.